Well, I have a system that I need to repaste. It is a uh, HP Omen. Uh, not the first time I've repasted this. I originally, when I first got this, I put liquid metal into it or on it. It worked. Problem is, is that it cracked at some point. The liquid metal dried out and separated. So I wasn't getting the best thermal conductivity out of it. And currently right now is that this thing is heating up to almost 85C, 90C on an idle. So that tells me that one of two things, it needs to be either repasted or fans are clogged. And my guess <clears throat> is that it's probably both. This has actually been a surprisingly decent laptop. It has either a 9500 series or an 8500 series CPU. And it's running a GTX 2080. No. Battery life on this thing. Uh-huh. Let's just say the battery's in here, so when you unplug it, you can get to another plug. Okay, we have it open. It looks very furry inside. First, I'm just getting some of this thicker stuff out of the fan. Oh. Doesn't that look tasty? Yummy. Now, this computer is actually vaped around. So the problem with vaping is depending on the fluid that you have. Um, if you get stuff with VG in it, VG does not evaporate. VG will stay atomized and it'll collect on objects. So you'll end up with this sticky film that collects on things. VG, I haven't found if people vape with PG around things. It doesn't tend to get sticky and it tends to evaporate. And that keeps things like this from happening, where the VG actually collects on these blades of the fan, which then makes them sticky, which then it'll pick up normal dust and being a laptop, actually some of this is probably dead skin cells. Which is, I guess, what mostly dust is, a lot of dust is, in any household. Doesn't that sound nice, old skin cells? So that's a lovely thought. Think about if you're trapped in an office some with someone, 
You're breathing in. Yeah, let's not think about that. Uh, let's see. So. What I'm going to do is repaste this. I don't even know if it actually needs it or not. Could just be it just needed to be cleaned out. Yes. Can of air. That is not the cable I wanted. This will take more than just a tug to get it out. Screwdriver to shove it up a little bit. What you're supposed to do is disconnect the battery, but... I'm stubborn. Besides, all these chips are now thermally protected, so even if the fan is off and the heat sink is off, the system just won't power up. It'll hit the thermal limit and shut itself down. Don't recommend doing that. I swore there was another screw over here. That's not. Just two. And that's floating. Okay. trick with getting these heat sinks and everything off have to use equal force and gentle force you do not want to bend any of these heat pipes you want to keep this as flush as possible heat pipes being those and since this is a joined system shares its clamp pressure with everything else so in other words the screws that are around the GPU also help hold down the screws that are on the CPU and the VRMs which I believe are over here this is the heat pipe for the VRMs which I think is just a thermal pad underneath it it's not really any heat sink compound to speak of Probably just a 3M pad underneath that. And these are all the same. Well, not quite all the same size screws. These are a little bigger. Let's separate these out. Four largest. So, I think I have it. Now let me just put a little bit of sideways i'm doing a sheer pressure so i'm kind of like tilting it a little bit like that i'm not actually pulling up on it not yet i just want to see if i can break seal of the current heat seed compound on the chips just using a little bit of shearing pressure Just a little bit of a lift up. 
There we go. Just a little bit here. Come on, shear it. Heat sink compound might actually be good. I don't know. It's been a year since I've had it on. since I repasted it and I repasted it with just kind of like I don't know maybe it was icy diamond it wasn't great stuff old stuff very old stuff do not want to use memory here that one's in there so this one that one's up ah, okay. looks like we are free so we can get a hold of this here Ooh, crusty. Oh. Whatever heat sink compound that is, it is stanky. So 3M pads. Is this even... Well, yeah, it's still not quite hard, but it's not, it's not fresh. And this, that's the CPU and here's the GPU. The GPU, this is just dry. So, This is just plastic on the edge here. This is non-conductive. Look at that. Hard and crispy. Comes right on. Yeah, this wasn't doing a whole lot to conduct heat. No, I, like I said, I don't care about scraping plastic here. I just want to get this extra compound off. I try not to make a mess everywhere. Also, I'm just going to brush off anyways. I uh, figure I will. I'm probably making some people cringe. Now, this is the fun part. Luckily, like I said, this is all non-conductive. So I don't really care if the compounds along the edge or on these caps, it does have a slight effect. Because even though it's non-conductive, you take anything that has any non-conductive and you run a voltage next to it, it will create a capacitance. And since those are capacitors, it could potentially alter the signal But in reality, that doesn't normally happen. So I don't really care about it too much. 
And if you're actually cleaning here, you have to be very, very careful. Because those little tiny caps are going to break off. And they can go from anywhere. being inconsequential to being a pretty big deal. So I'm barely even touching this. Like I said, I don't really care if it gets fully clean or not. It's mainly this chip here that I want as clean and polished as possible. But while I'm at it, if I can clean this up, I will. And my OCD will kick in and I will try and get it fully clean. I don't want to leave it halfway. So yeah, this is one of my primary systems I game on. And work on oh. Apparently this stuff will dissolve pretty quickly. Interesting. Kind of gives me an idea how to revive it. Interesting thought. I'll try it sometimes just to see how it works out. I mean, because the purpose of heat sink compound is really just to bridge the gaps for inconsistencies between the heat sink and the chip. So you don't actually need a whole lot. In fact, the thinner it is, the better it is. So what I'm wondering, would it be possible to thin the heat sink compound out Make it nice and thin. So when the heat sink actually touches it, it has as close to contact as absolutely possible. I'm just using my nail here along the edge to kind of cut a line into this old heat sink compound. I'll allow the solvent get down beside it because what I'd like to do is clean that all up if I can that way even though it shouldn't affect it it's no question Mess. Okay. 
I'm very, being very, very, very gentle with this. Barely using any pressure at all. Relative to the size of the chips, I'm being hand fisted. Just the same thing with the CPU. At least get some of it off the. Board. Or the actual caps. This is where when I was doing liquid metal on this, I had to be very, very careful. Because liquid metal will you put too much on it, but you aren't very careful. It likes to ball up until it creates a film. Actually, I should say it's reverse that, not creates a film, but it actually removes part of the oxidation layer on the silicon, and then it actually attaches to the silicon, and then it'll spread across the silicon perfectly. It has to remove that oxidation layer. If I'm correct, I think that's what it is. If I recall correctly, it's an oxidation layer. And then once you do that, it'll actually lay down on the chip just fine. But in the meantime, it'll ball up. And if you're not careful, those little gallium balls will roll off and they love to get in contact with any type of solder or get underneath chips to where you have a little ball grid array underneath these chips. And then they will create a bridge and that just makes it a nightmare to clean up if it can be cleaned up at all sometimes it can't sometimes it's easier just to replace when that happens Is that term good enough? And I think it's hit that point. Now for this. Now this cooler had liquid metal on it at one time and it had it on it for about six months and once i clean this off you'll actually see what the liquid metal did to the cooler again i'm doing this very gently because i don't want to flex the cooler itself reflects the pipes. But keep in mind this is a copper cooler. Double checked it. It's copper all the way through.
need clean paper towel. So that's what happens. It has embedded the liquid metal into the copper. Or stained it, or however you would like to call it. Now, it is my understanding, I have not tested this, it is my understanding that that does not affect the thermal properties to any measurable amount. So, even though the copper got embedded with the heat sink compound or the liquid metal, once it was removed, it didn't make much of a difference. Again, there's a nice, I can see it from my angle. I don't know if you can see it from the camera, but there's stains on these chips where the liquid metal affected it. So what I need to do here, I'm debating on if I want to completely remove these fans to clean them out. It looks like I may, because this is quite a bit in here. You know, unbolt the fan chassis itself, remove these fans. In that case, I can probably just take this, set it back down. There's no heat sink compound here, so I don't have to worry about smearing anything. Being stubborn. I do it. So take this. Do one at a time. There's that, and then we'll do this one too. Is there a piece in here? Where or where might it be hiding? This one. And this one here is held on by this. Ah, it's taped. It's taped there. I'll leave the tape on there. Look at that. Nice and packed in. Of 
And it just looks like plain old electrical tape that they put on here just to seal up the edge. Over the long term. Eh, yeah, it will help direct the air out through here. Yeah, let's blow this out. This one here is a little bit more difficult because I think this one here has two connection connection points. But I don't see where the actual connection lies. Unless it's just entirely being held on by Blue, it is. There we go. And look at that nice layer of hair and dust. And this is after about, I don't know, six months. So, yeah, a lot's happening in a home situation where you have pets around people a lot. They can get sat on furniture. Uh, all sorts of different things. But, yes, you'll end up collecting up dust uh, really fast. At least it's been my experience that that's the case. Well, I have this open. Oh, let's see. Now, oh, a tedious bit. is not really needed. I just want to get any type of large clumps out of here. Because if there is any type of large clumps actually stuck in the fan, it can throw off the balance. And if you throw off the balance, you end up with a noisy fan. It also ends up destroying the bearings. Which is called a maglev bearing system, but... In theory, it's supposed to use magnets to level levitate the fan, but there's still a guide. If you have a wobble, it'll wear out that guide. One down, one more to go. Of course, I can't see the screw to know what I'm doing. So I'm kind of just doing this by hand. Or I should say by touch. Yay for magnetizing a screwdriver. Which I tend to do with all of mine. What I discovered when I was a kid is that if you take a degaussing coil, of course I grew up with CRTs, 
And for some reason, I had a bulk tape eraser. I don't know where I got it. But it was useful for like CRT, TR televisions. So if someone took a magnet up to it, you could always make the colors join up because it would actually cause the grid underneath it to bend and flex. Anyways, you can take the degaussian coil and use that to clear that up. But what I also discovered when I was a kid is that if you take a degaussian coil, which is really just nothing but a big coil with an AC current running through it at 60 times per second, it's plugged directly into the wall. Um, you can stick a screwdriver up to it, turn the degaussian coil on, and leave the screwdriver there, and shut off the degaussian coil. And it will leave the screwdriver polarized, magnetically polarized, to whatever be it north or south, that the flux pattern was in when you shut the coil off. So doing it that way, I was always ended up magnetizing all of my screwdrivers and tools. And then if I didn't want them magnetized anymore, you could take the same degaussian coil, stick it next to it with it turned on, but while it's running, don't shut off the degaussian coil, just pull the screwdriver away. And that would demagnetize the screwdriver. It would leave all its magnetic polarities of all the different atoms in a random jumbled order. So it would effectively demagnetize the screwdriver. Doing that, I could do it as many times as I wanted. I still have that degaussian coil around here someplace. But yes, I had that as a kid. Still no idea where I got it, though. I think it's just one of those things I found out or found in, like, the garage that was probably, like, my great-grandfather's or something. Either way, it's quite useful. Ooh. That's a mess. That is a mess. Look at that. Let's see. There's another one that kind of qualifies as good enough. So again, here, screw this back on. Four screws. Now, technically, I'm not supposed to have it propped up this way. You're supposed to support these evenly because even this little bottom weight of this pulling down on it can cause these heat pipes to flex. But I'm not really too concerned about that if it couldn't handle that much of an inconsistency. They would never be able to mass manufacture these systems. So, just because something is the recommended it doesn't mean it's the perfect or the optimal. 
But if you want to be safe, eh, you probably should do it. Me, I'm willing to take the risk. Since it's my stuff. Someone else's, I probably would. Not take the risks. So, supposedly I have some MX4 here. Supposedly it's MX4. I have no idea. Again, old heat sink compound. So, let's just put the blob. That's enough. And a line here, and a line here, and a line here, and a line here. Good enough. Of course, this is non-conductive. Not too concerned. Okay. Next four. Okay, I'm just like really. Do, 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 do. Let's draw pictures. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh, let's just make it give it an arm here. Here and here. Yeah. Anyways, the whole goal, the idea behind it of putting the pattern down is so when you squeeze it down, it's going to try and push out this way and this way and fill in the gaps and it's going to push the air bubbles out. So that's the whole point of not covering it entirely because then it's possible that it'll make contact with the outside corners first and seal up in here and then you'd leave an air bubble inside the center. Air doesn't conduct or conduct heat very well. You do not want that. So that's the whole point of putting the heat sink compound in the center. What I've found is that it doesn't really matter a whole lot. You can put it any which way. It's just that when you do put it down, kind of uh Put a little bit of pressure on it and give it a little bit of a shift and what that does that will actually cause the compound itself to slide and shear along it which will sometimes break it apart and let the air come out well look at that that looks like some old liquid metal and so does this Yay for surface tension, wouldn't you say? Yeah. It is, it's liquid metal. Oh, liquid metal. Oh, I will not use you again. It has massive thermal conductivity, but you're a pain in the butt to work with. Look at that. More liquid metal. Come on, let's shift it off. Wow. What do you want to bet? I've had some flakiness with this machine for a while now. I couldn't figure out why. It's like every once in a while it would reboot and shut down for no apparent reason whatsoever. It'd be fine. It'd be fine for days on end. And then it'd come up in the log usually while it was sitting idle. Unexpected shutdown occurred, blah, blah, blah. And then there's some bug report, kernel panic. But I'll bet you anything. 
That's what the problem was. Wasn't really touching anything. The, the, the liquid metal wasn't really touching anything or touching the pads, at least not directly. But it always seemed to occur when it was idle. And like anything in a system, it's going to have some sort of flexing with heat. So my guess would be as it cooled down, things would contract. And now for, so now it's in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just lift up on this here just a little bit and see how it's shifting. You can see it's just shifting just ever so slightly. You can see from the reference point of the screw and the hole. I do that, you can see it's shifting ever so slightly. But what I'm doing by doing that is I'm helping seat it down. Same with this one, just a little tiny shift. Doesn't have to be much. And that way, both of these get shifted. Now what we're going to do is tighten these in the proper order. Most systems are usually numbered. You notice like this is number five to tighten down. Um, you know, the order of tightening the bolts is usually numbered on there, depending on the system that you have. And if it doesn't, what I tend to do is I follow from farthest points, I will just basically pretty much just barely tighten them down first. So I'm not actually going to tighten these down very much. Uh, let's see, this side goes over here. So these aren't actually tightened down very hard, but they're just kind of loose. And once I get all of them screwed in, we started, then I'll start a pattern of tightening them down. And I'm screwing the heat sinks in before I'm screwing the fans in. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want these to be the guide of where they're going to seat. I don't want the fans themselves when I screw those down governing it because there will be a shift as it tightens down. And I want these pieces to be what governs at what position it's going to have its final resting place at. Final until I tear it apart it again. Okay. Now what I try and do is I just try and go corner corner. I don't treat these as individual components saying like, okay, this is my CPU block. This is my GPU block. I treat this entire heat sink as one entire piece. So when I'm tightening corners, I'm going from this corner to this corner, this corner to this corner, and then I will start tightening in the center pieces. So this will lock down the outside pieces and then this side, so what that'll do is as I tighten this piece, it'll cause any type of inconsistency to kind of tilt inward. So if here's the board, here's the heat sink, it's really tiny, but it's going to cause it to go like that. It's going to lay down. It's going to be loose over here, but it'll be tight over here. I'll do that on both sides, which will then cause it to shift down a little bit more and push more of the heat sink compound out. And then I tighten the inside bolts and that actually locks down the center piece. So in the end, it should be a flat surface. So that's also the reason why you tighten you don't just tighten in a random order. And this doesn't have to be tightened down extremely hard either. It's just, it has to be enough because there's always vibration in the system just from the fan. But that doesn't vibrate a whole lot. So it only has to be partially tightened. 
So now we will put in the rest of the screws. And since that's all fully tightened down, there's no rush of where these screws end up. Mm, that one didn't feel right screwing in. Okay, it's good. What I tend to do to make sure I don't cross thread these is I'll back it off. I put it in the hole and then I'll back off once until I hear a click and then I'll screw in. Um, yeah. So that's it. Heat sinks cleaned and repasted. That little tiny hair was bugging me. And one final thing. Don't make sure you plug in the fans. Remember, fans must plug in fans. Don't want to do that again where I leave the fans unplugged, get the thing entirely put together. Put out the computer, get ready to work. Then wondering why it's so hot. And the fans aren't running. And that's because I wasn't paying attention when I reassembled and got in a hurry and didn't plug in the fans. Let's relay the cords down where they belong. Just want guides. Again, not critical, but does help. Interesting speaker. Oh, wow, they're floating. Hmm. Seems like that could be a problem. Well, it's too much. Oh, it's loose. Oh, tight. Okay. Well, let's turn this on and see if it works or if I killed it. And I shall hold it up since there is nothing here. So I'm holding it up. So it's booting. More concerned that the fans will kick on. I do have them plugged in. Getting warm. here so fans on auto set to comfort turn on max because i want the fans to spin haha -ha! fans are spinning and when they're spinning there we go Keep in mind, those were running at I want to say, well, one was at 80C, the other one was at 40. Default. Okay, well, let's shut it down. Seems to be working.
Who knows? Me as also with this repasting fixed a random reboot problem. Hopefully, piece of liquid metal floating around on the memory, and not just on the memory itself, on like a the plug or on the side of it on the heat spreader. No, 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 no liquid metal actually on the commentator the pins of the dim like the worst spot it could be and that appears to be that <laughs> 